Hi everyone. So today I want to talk to you a little bit more about what to do when a loved one is unwilling to seek help for a mental health problem. But before I do that, I just want to do a quick reminder to check out the Patreon link in my description below if you want to support the creation of future videos like this. So sometimes people who are experiencing mental health problems can be unwilling to seek help. And this can be really difficult for family members or friends who are seeing them struggling with their mental health problem and seeing that they're unwilling to accept the help that you're trying to give them. And I know that that can be a really difficult situation to be in. There are a couple of reasons, however, why someone may be unwilling to accept help. So those can include um, that they don't recognize or believe that they have a mental health problem, or they may believe that they are capable of handling it on their own. They may also be fearful of the mental health system, or they may be fearful of stigma that may fall upon them if they have a mental health diagnosis. They could also just be in a place where they're just apathetic to getting help and they just don't want to accept the help because they feel their situation is hopeless or there's just a general sense of apathy around their situation. I think the most important thing that I want to convey though within this video is that you can't force someone to accept help. So even if you have the best of intentions and are trying your best to help them access support and help, you can't force someone to receive this kind of help. They need to want to access it on their own. So some tips on what to do within this really difficult situation would be to just start off with making sure that you're opening up the conversation with your loved one. So letting them know um, your concerns and why you're concerned about them and really making sure to use I statements rather than you statements. Because you don't want to be attaching blame or anything. Um, you just want to be making sure that you are voicing your concerns and that you are coming at it from as unthreatening a position as possible. So really focusing on why you are concerned rather than saying something along the lines of you are exhibiting this say I am concerned that I'm noticing that you are doing this or using using I statements and really making sure that you're keeping the conversation open with them so making sure that you're keeping the conversation open about the difficulties that they're experiencing or about the symptoms that are coming up and just making sure you're keeping that dialogue really open with them um, also making sure that they know that you're a really safe person to come to when they do want to access help or when they do want to access supports and that you'll be there to help support them through that it can be helpful too to let them know what exactly you mean by getting help or getting supports. So this can be either um, making a therapy appointment or going to see your doctor or going to see a psychiatrist or even checking into a treatment facility or a hospital. Um, just making sure it's clear what you mean by um, accessing supports or help. I think if you are able to do all of these, that would be really helpful, but it's also really important to not hold yourself responsible for them accessing help or extra supports. Um, again, like I said earlier, you can't force someone to access these supports or this help. So really making sure that you're not putting it all on yourself and really holding yourself accountable for the other person that you're trying to help accessing supports. Also, don't take it personally if they don't want to accept your help. Um, they may be going through different things that they aren't communicating with you. They may be hesitant to, to accept this help for the various reasons that I outlined at the beginning of the video. But just don't take it personally if they're not willing to ask or if they're not willing to accept your help right off the bat. In terms of taking care of yourself and whatnot, it is also really important to access supports for yourself and for your family or loved ones who are also um, trying to help your loved one access support. So it's really important to take care of yourself and to make sure that you are supporting yourself as best as possible through this difficult situation as well. You may find um, different things helpful, such as attending therapy yourself or seeking out different support groups for people who are, su are supporting um, people experiencing mental health problems or um, just the basics of taking care of yourself. So self-care basics. So making sure you're getting enough sleep and taking care of your nutrition and taking care of your physical activity and just all those kinds of things to make sure you're taking care of yourself as best as possible in order to best support your loved one. I'm also gonna provide a few tips on what to do if a crisis situation arises. So it's really important to familiarize yourself with the Mental Health Act or the equivalent in your region um, and to just kind of know 
what you can do with under this mental health act or under the law in your region um, around a crisis situation and what to do if a crisis situation arises. So some crisis resources that a crisis plan should include would include the contact information for the nearest hospital, crisis lines, the nearest police department, a treatment provider, a child care provider if relevant or required, and just a list of supportive family members and friends. If there are immediate concerns for your loved one's safety, make sure to take them to the nearest emergency room as quickly as possible if it is safe to do so. Um, if they are unwilling to go, make sure you call 911 and just kind of um, make sure that the 911 operator knows that it's a mental health emergency, just in case there is a mental health res crisis response team available to come and assess the situation and help support your loved one. In terms of getting your loved one into treatment, um, it's it, they're protected under the law, basically, to um, be able to decide for themselves if they want to access treatment. Um, and it's usually more effective anyway if they are wanting to access that treatment. Here in Canada, there are several options for getting a loved one into treatment um, against their will, but um, again, it's really recommended to work with them in terms of getting them into treatment. So thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If you did find it helpful or if you liked it, make sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for future videos like this. Also, make sure to check out the link to my Patreon page in the description below where you can help support the creation of future videos such as this one. Um, thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.